barabara kabisa mtazamaji popote ulipo hujambo karibu kwenye taarifa za KTN leo jioni hii ya siku ya kwanza ya wiki ya ni tarehe 21 mwezi wa machi 2016 niite manzu moja kwa moja mtazamaji tunaanza taarifa zetu ama tunaanzia sehemu ya Uholanzi kule ambako aliyekuwa makamu wa rais katika Jamhuri ya Demokrasia ya Kongo Jean Pierre Bemba amepatikana na hatia ya ubakaji na mauaji katika Jamhuri ya Afrika ya Kati zaidi ya miaka kumi iliyopita katika uamuzi uliotolewa na mahakama ya kimataifa kuhusu uhalifu ICC mapema jioni hii Bemba alipatikana na makosa matano aliyoshtakiwa na kusema kuwa jeshi lake la kibinafsi maarufu kwa jina la MLC lilisababisha maafa makubwa likijaribu kuzuia kupinduliwa kwa aliyekuwa rais wa Jamhuri ya Afrika katika miaka hiyo In the bush outside PK22 in November 2002 Three MLC soldiers attacked the woman. When she resisted, the men ripped off her clothes, pulled her, her legs apart, and all three men raped her. P29 in Mungumba on 5th March 2003. While she was preparing to flee from the MLC, Three MLC soldiers forced the victim back into her house and proceeded to rape her. Kongenego kulikuwa na ghasia katika mji wa Kibwezi katika kaunti ya Makweni saa za asubuhi wakati mamia wa wakazi walipoandamana wakilalamikia barabara mbovu. Waandamanaji hao walikabiliana na maafisa wa polisi ambao walio watawanya wakitumia vito wa machozi. Viongozi wa sehemu hiyo wakiongozwa na seneta wa Kitui David Musila walidai kuwa serikali zote baada ya Kenya kujipatia uhuru zimekuwa zikibagua barabara ya kutoka Kibwezi kuelekea Kitui na kuzuia uwekezaji katika kaunti za maeneo hayo. nadhika sana bwana vumbi limekuwa mingi sana ngibeba customer ni shida mavuruvugo imejaa kila mahali hapa mawe imekuwa mingi sana sasa kusafiri na kwa ngumu sana today we are demonstrating against the government for their failure to tarmac this road this is a B7 a B classified road and we know for sure there are roads C and D elsewhere and even E which are being tarmacked but this road B7 is one of the most important roads in the Republic of Kenya I found the police officer and they started beating me for nothing so what happened I don't know what is going on uh -huh. I've seen all just police officer coming from nowhere I don't I don't the, where the police officer came from did you lose anything yes my pawn my 2000 shillings even my nini wallet ndio hali iliyokuwa hiyo mapema hii leo katika baadhi ama sehemu ya barabara katika kaunti ya Makueni tukirudi hapa jijini Nairobi wakazi wa mtaa wa Donholm na wale kutoka mtaa wa umoja walilazimika kutumia mbinu nyingine za usafiri baada ya vijana kadhaa kuzifunga barabara mtaani humo kulingana na vijana hao waliungana na madereva wa matatu za barabara ya mitaa hiyo walidai zimewachosha huku zikitajwa kusababisha misongamano mirefu pamoja na ajali Saida Saleh anaarifu zaidi Asubuhi ya Jumatatu wakazi wa mtaa wa Donholm waliraukia rabisha hizi Vijana kutoka mtaa huo na ule wa umoja walijikusanya na kuandamana kwa kilewa kinachokitaja ni kuharibika kwa barabara Hii Donholm yetu tumeishi tumedhulumiwa kuna maendeleo Si ni kweli? Barabara tangu tushago MC hapa ajayo inaonekana barabara imekuwa ni magrevu. Haya, leo tunapanda mahindi hapa juu hakuna barabara. What kuna jamu na kazi zaidi ya masaa manne. Kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu ya makot hall. Baadhi ya waandamanaji pia wakiwa dereva wa matatu walizuia barabara ya Savannah Donholm ikiwa lazimu wanafunzi na wengine wengi kutembea hadi barabara ya Utaring ili kupata usafiri. Kama hatutaona matinga tinga zimekuja kutengeneza barabara hapa. Hii barabara haitawahi pitika. Maandamano hayo yalisababisha msongamano mkuu wa magari huku maafisa wa usalama wakipata wakati mgumu kuudhibiti 
kulingana na wakazi wamechoshwa kupewa ahadi zisizotekelezwa mtu ambaye amejali mambo ya mabarabara ma watu wetu ambao wanauza hapa hivi wamekuwa nafukuzwa hapa na pale so there is no identified market for our people to sell their stuff leo tumeamua kumeka statement to Kidero himself and the national county as a uh, as a people of upper savanna that we need a change if it's not going to happen in the next few hours we will have this road closed kulingana na msemaji wa county ya Nairobi Walter Mungare tayari wahandisi wametumwa ili kuchunguza namna ukarabati huo utaanzishwa bila kuathiri usafiri katika eneo hilo na maeneo ya karibu Saida Swali Kiti leo Mtazamaji mazungumzo baina ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na Rais wa Uganda Yoweri Kaguta Museveni ambaye aliingia nchini mapema leo kuhusu mradi wa kuwezeka mabomba ya mafuta kutoka Uganda na kupitia hapa nchini Kenya yalikosa kuzaa matunda baina ya mataifa ya Kenya na Uganda huku viongozi wa mataifa hayo wakiweka miadi ya kukutana tena baada ya wiki mbili jijini Kampala nchini Uganda kwenye muda huo mawaziri wakawi wa Kenya na Uganda wakiwa na viongozi wengine wakuu watalainisha changamoto mbali mbali kabla ya mradi huo. Kenya inataka mabomba hayo yaliyotakiwa kupitia Tanzania kubadilisha mkondo na kupitia hapa nchini Kenya. The only partner which we are, which, which is really uh, uh, giving conflicting issues are total uh, which is also a major part is they are third a third in terms of their shareholding. And uh, it is good to know that um, when we say the northern pipeline it comes through Isholo. Even if you see in the map people think it's going through Mandera, it's going through Wajir. It's just Isholo here which is I think it's about 3 hours drive from Nairobi. So the issues of in of sec in security and what not doesn't arise it's like Nairobi. Isholo and Nairobi is just 3 hours uh, difference tueleke mahakamani na mwanaharakati wa haki za kibinadamu Kalinga Mgandi mapema hii leo alitangaza waziwazi katika mahakama ya Mombasa kuwa ana uhusiano wa kimapenzi kwa muda mrefu na seneta mteule katika chama cha TNE Mambura Kalinga ambaye alikamatwa Nairobi hapo jana na kufikishwa katika mahakama ya Mombasa mapema hii leo alisema hayo alipofikishwa kizimbani anakokabiliwa na mashtaka ya kutuma ujumbe wa matusi kwa simu ya mkononi ya seneta huyo Kalinga alisema mbele ya hakimu mkuu wa Mombasa Susan Shitubi baada ya wakili mbura wakili wa mbura Christine Sang kupinga kuwa mashtaka hayo hayatakiwi kusomewa mshukiwa kwa sababu hakuwa ameripoti kisa hicho Kalinga alisitiza kuwa mbura ni mpenzi wake na hata alitengana na mke wake kwa sababu ili apate kuwa naye kwa gineko mtazamaji mkuu katika idara ya upelelezi nchini ndego wa muhoro wamekashi fivikali madai ambayo yaliohusisha kupokea hongo pamoja na yale madai yaliyotolewa katika barua ya wakili Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi kuhusu mradi wa tatu City ambao kwa sasa unaonekana kuibua hisia mseto licha ya kesi hiyo kuwa mahakamani akizungumza na wanahabari mapema hii leo muhoro amewashauri mawakili wake kuanzisha kesi iwapo hatopata kusikia kutoka kwa wakili Abdullahi Hussein Mohamed na taarifa zaidi kwa mujibu wa sheria bila mapendeleo bila shauku wa chuki tulikula kiapo tukasema hivyo nimesimama na msimamo huo tangu leo na sitabadilika hata dakika moja maelezo ya mkuu wa idara upelelezi nchini ndego wa muhoro yanatoa taswira sakata na madai yaliyoibua hoja tofauti amelaumu gazeti na wakili Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi kwa kumwaribia jina madai ambayo katika barua hii Ahmed Nasir na mkashifu ndego wa muhoro kupokea hongo ya shilingi milioni hamsini pamoja na ekari metatu za ardhi ili kuharibu mwelekeo wa kesi hiyo ya ardhi So lazima likizingirwa na mradi wa Tatu City. Ndegwa anasema kazi yake alifanya iliyosalia ilikuwa ni afisi ya kiongozi wa mashtaka inaongozwa na kile yako Tobiko. We never made any recommendation on any side who was capable and who was not. And we were seeking for legal advice from the office of the DPP to enable us to provide and to proceed with the investigation. 
kufuatia yote hayo anasema atawashtaki wale wote waliohusika katika kuandika arifa na taarifa hizo I've instructed my lawyers to institute proceedings against all those that participated in authoring the articles I have referred to above That brief is now in the hands of my lawyers and I trust once in court the truth will definitely come out Huku barua ya wakili Ahmed Nasir kidai kuwa muhoro alipokea hongo na ya muhoro kwa upande wake akisema kuwa alipata malalamishi kutoka pande mbili tangu Juni mwaka uliopita ikiwa ni alikuwa mkurugenzi wa benki kuu ya Kenya na Hasho Nyaga pamoja na wale wengine waliotajwa katika kesi ya mradi wa Tatu City The genesis of the vitriol name calling tantrums and obvious acrimony characterized by the contents of the articles complained of was a matter arising out of a simple investigation on forgery and in fraud in what is now commonly known as Tatu City Swala hili la mradi wa Tatu City ambalo bado lipo mahakamani inaonekana kufungua ukurasa mpya wa madai na kauli tofauti kutoka pande zote Hussein Mohamed KTN News Nairobi Unaendelea kutazama taarifa za KTN leo jioni hii ya siku ya kwanza ya wiki ya ni siku ya Jumatatu na kumua kidogo baada ya mtazamaji nitarudi tuendelee na taarifa zaidi usiende mbali Naam karibu tena mtazamaji tuendelee na taarifa zaidi kwenye makala ya elimu na taaluma ikiwa leo ni siku ya Jumatatu leo makala hayo basi ya elimu na taaluma tunamwangazia ama tunaangazia endapo kauli za waziri wa elimu daktari Fred Matiangi zina mashiko kwamba walimu hawapaswi kuhudumu katika mazingira ambayo wanayopendelea wenyewe hata hivyo ajira kimaeneo na hata geografia vimeonekana kuzua mjadala mkubwa miongoni mwa wakenya maana habari Elvis Kosgei na taarifa zaidi kwenye makala ya elimu na taaluma request the government if they cannot bring us teachers if they cannot restore the situation we want the government to give this region a special exam zilikuwa kauli ya bwana mdogo huyu zilizoonekana kwangu saratili katika bahari ya elimu katika uchanga wake huu tayari amedai kwamba ametelekezwa kwa misingi ya imani na mielekeo kuwa maeneo ya kaskazini mwa nchi pana utovu wa usalama hivyo kuwafanya walimu kususia kazi safari hii we are not going to be telling those silly stories we tell about clans and so on we will dissolve them any board of management that is engaged in pettiness this principle doesn't come from my clan they get involved with all manner of people including local village politicians we will dissolve them immediately and move on kisha kaja bwana mkubwa huyu ambaye matamshi yake yalionekana kwa shanuru katika maeneo yalionekana kuwa na giza licha ya kauli zake kutawaliwa na mwongozo wa kuleta usawa shuleni bila kuzingatia ubaguzi wa kimaeneo huenda maneno haya yakasalia tu kwenye madaftari yasiyokuwa na uhalisia out of the 225 admissions in form 1 that 80% are given to the chances from down Kenya but they don't turn up we are not going to intimidate and harass principals on the basis of this silly business of clanism and so on Kinachozua mjadala ni kwa tutashi vipi kwenye ulimwengu uliojikita kwenye uhalisia wa mambo kiasi cha kumpombaukia mwalimu na hata mwanafunzi kwa tuna uhuru wa kuishi popote bila kuhofia maisha. Tunataki uh, walimu wa kutoka kungine, tunataka walimu wa kutoka nyumbani, ubaguzi vimaribu dunia. Ila kuna baadhi ya wakenya waliosikuwa mwalimu wa uwezo mkubwa wa kuboresha elimu endapo tu hatahudumu kwenye mazingira aliyokulia na kuyazoea. Nzuri wakae kwao ndio wafundishe kwa lugha ya kinyumbani na lugha wakitafsiri kwa lugha ya Kiingereza. Hayo ni maoni na hisia mseto kutoka kwa Wakenya. Sasa ni jukumu la wadausika katika taasisi za elimu kutathmini hayo kwa kina. Kenya ilimaliza mashindano ya ndani ya Marekani bila ushindi wowote huku Agustin Nchoge pamoja na Margaret Nyairera wakitoa shaba katika mbio za mita 3000 na 400 mtawalia. Marekani walifunga awamu ya mwaka huu ya mashindano hayo huku wakitia kibindoni dhahabu nyingine katika siku ya mwisho ya mashindano hayo. 
Ethiopia wanaokumbukwa kwa wanaokumbwa na madai ya utumizi wa dawa za kusisimua misuli ama mwili walitamba katika mbio za masafa marefu mabeshi Genzebe Dibaba na Yomi Fakejelta walikuwa miongoni mwa walioshamiri katika mbio za mita 3000 Marekani walimaliza mbio hizo wakitoa uskani katika msimamo wa jedwali kwa jumla ya jedma medali 23 ambapo 13 zilikuwa ni za dhahabu Ethiopia walikuwa katika nafasi ya pili wakiona jumla ya dhahabu mbili hakuna nchi nyingine ambayo iliyokuwa na zaidi ya dhahabu moja hatimaye waandalizi wa mashindano ya gofu nchini ya Kenya Open wamedokeza kwamba wachezaji kutoka humu nchini sasa watapata fursa ya kushiriki mashindano ya kitaifa kwa ajili ya kujipima nguvu waandalizi hao pia wamewahimiza wa Kenya kujiunga na mchezo wa gofu Huku mchezaji kutoka Uswizi Sebastian Sodberg akitoa taji la Kenya Open mwaka huu baada ya kukosa kushinda mwaka jana ilikuwa wazi kwamba kuna tofauti ya viwango kati ya wachezaji wa Kenya na wale walio walikuwa katika mashindano hayo ya gofu. Dismas Indiza ndiye mkenya ambaye aliorodheshwa wa kwanza kwenye mashindano hayo baada ya kumaliza katika nafasi ya 38 huku maswali yakiibuka kuhusu viwango vya mchezo huo nchini. We want uh, in the future to ensure that at least two Kenyans participate in all the charge tour events we have negotiated with the charge tour and they will be inviting Kenyans so that they have the international exposure they need to go out there and play in other courses and play in other championships so that they can get the experience huku baadhi ya wachezaji kwenye mashindano hayo wakiwa na umri chini ya miaka 25 ikilinganishwa na wachezaji wa nyumbani shirikisho la mchezo huo linatumai kukuza chipukizi watakao shiriki mchezo huo siku za usoni but our professionals in fact most of them are now seniors so we must start from the grassroots uh, from our youth and that, then we come up to the ranks we are encouraging the juniors as well to really uh, start early we are asking the parents start early with the pros because the clubs have given this facility kwa sasa wasimamizi wa Kenya Open wamewahimiza wa Kenya kujiunga na mchezo huo na pia kujiepusha na mtazamo kwamba mchezo huo umetengewa watu wa hadhi fulani it's a wrong perception because golf is a sport like any other sport um, and i think you have to create interest in in wanting to play golf it's not a joke it's not for the faint hearted and i think it's the only sport in the world that you really compete against yourself Kenya iliwasajili wachezaji 20 wawili kwenye mashindano hayo huku watatu wakimaliza kwenye sitini bora Robinson Okenye Kate Michezo na mtazamaji basi kufikia hapa hatuna la ziada asante sana kutazama taarifa za KTN leo jioni hii nimekuwa wako Ali Manzu hadi hapo kesho naomba tukutane tena kwa heri